Uh, first order of business, we'll call the meeting to order and roll call, please. Christy, can you do the roll? Scott Allen. Here. Casey Sampson. Present. Nicole Levington. Here. George Piper. Scott Sewell. All right, we have a quorum and then first item on the agenda, or I'm sorry, first uh, action item here will be approval of the minutes. Um, do not, well, we'll actually have to yeah. table the minutes there because yeah. we do not have commissions present at the last meeting. So uh, we'll see new old business. We'll move right to new business which is a COA for the heart of Lebanon. Uh, we'll hear from staff first, Derek. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Um, so tonight, first agenda item is the heart of Lebanon, uh, care of Missy Krulik. Um, the location tonight for this application is 128 East Main Street, which is the Presbyterian Church Pocket Park, as we refer to it as. Um, the property is zoned central business. This property has been before the HPC for the Pocket Park approval. Um, the Pocket Park does not carry a classification. Uh, tonight, the action requested is a certificate of appropriateness for temporary pinwheel decorations. And I will show you what that looks like uh, here in a minute. But uh, the Heart of Lebanon is seeking a COA to install a multicolor pinwheel uh, strung on a plastic coated steel wire cable connected to three light poles bordering the Presbyterian Pocket Park. The strands of pinwheels are intended to be installed overhead of the park. Uh, the installation of this application will be temporary display for 2021 um, as kind of a trial uh, to see how it works out uh, from mid-April through mid-June. Uh, the cables will be securely attached to the city street light poles, the trunk of the tree in the southwest corner of the park, um, as noted being careful not to harm it using a barrier between the cable and the bark of the tree, and a pole located near the playground fence. The applicant has attached three possible configurations with this application. Um, uh, the Lebanon Utilities has approved use of the light poles, and I just confirmed with the applicant tonight that the Presbyterian Church has also uh, given their blessing, pun intended, for uh, <laughs> use of their space as well. Um, so I'm going to give you a short video, if you could display this on the screen, possibly of what these things look like in action. Is that showing up very well? Yeah. So you can see um, the wind kinda makes these things twirl around and uh, they get, gives a little motion to them and you can kinda get an idea of the color. And apparently dogs are very interested about them as well. <laughs> um, so, you know, we've talked about art pretty extensively in the district, and um, I think art in general has been encouraged. Uh, artwork such as these pinwheels can add a whimsical touch of color to the park for a temporary amount of time. And I think uh, temporary, you know, being the key there, because, you know, we don't know exactly, you know, what the wind is going to do these things or how well they're made. Or, um, and I'm sure the applicant will be very careful about uh, being vigilant to make sure that if something you know, were to go awry with these things that they're taken care of quickly. Um, I'm sure the phone will be ringing off the hook if something is not as it should be. Uh, so staff believes the insulation between mid-April to mid-June poses very little risk of creating an adverse effect to the district. Uh, so staff encourages recommendation for the 2021 installation period. All right, thank you. Any questions for staff? I, my only question would be, um, if these, if this, um, if the pinwheels withstand weather um, better than expected, is there any anticipation of extending the life of them? Um, that's a good question, and I don't know the answer to that. So the applicant might be able to give, shed some light on that. If uh, let's see, if you're done with me, I believe so. Thank okay. you. Any questions, sir? All right. We'll hear from the applicant, uh, okay. Missy Krulik, with the Heart of Lebanon. Good evening, Missy Krulik with the Heart of Lebanon. Uh, I have some of the pinwheels that I put together so you can kind of see the range in color. Um, there are nine different colors, so just ranging in different hues. 
Um, when they come to me, when they came, they are not put together. So. Um, so you had an arts and crafts session. Right. We're going to be putting a lot of pinwheels together. This is approved. And then here's the cable that it's that it's strung on. Um, so this is, is just intended to be a temporary art display, uh, something full of color for the spring, early summer, something to bring people downtown, uh, a photo op uh, for families, um, just something to gaze at, <laughs> uh, something of interest in the pocket park. And then we're gonna do a campaign, um, take a whirl downtown. So they'll be able to go and uh, look at the pinwheels that are suspended above the park, and then they can go to any business and uh, pick up a, a pinwheel that they can take with them. So just a, a little campaign to get people to come downtown and, and um, you know, get, get something out there for the kids to enjoy. So. I've seen that the, the, obviously the pack that you have is multicolored. Do you know if they have them or you, is it available to purchase where it could be all of one color? The first thing comes to my mind is different months that, you know, the breast cancer awareness first comes to mind. Uh, if it would be a year long project, do you know if that's available? No, they just come in this. I mean, these are the only ones I found and, and they just come in the multicolor pack. Okay. So um, we have 500 of them. Um, so there would be 500 of them suspended. So, if if it's approved. And is it does it come with the wire? Or is the wire purchased separately? I know yeah, you no, it the comes wire. with the wire, the um, uh, the fasteners, uh, the things to fasten them to the the wire so they don't slide back and forth. Um, so yeah, just a whole kit. Any other questions for Ms. Krulik? Okay. It, just one other quick come to mind. Um, if this works out and it looks to be like it may be some type of permanent fixture in downtown, um, have you looked at the options of, of the different color cable that, that appears red from here? I can't tell, but yeah. uh, or copper maybe. Um, but a black wire, a black coated wire might uh, complement all of the black fixtures better than a, mm -hmm. a red wire. Yeah, absolutely. So that. Just a food for thought when they're going there. Okay, any other questions for the temporary art display? All right, with that, I will make a motion to approve the COA as submitted and seek a second. Second it. Uh, motion and second, all those in favor, aye? Aye. Aye, aye. motion carries, aye. aye, thank you. Thank you. I would say, I hope it goes off with the uh, flying colors. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving right along here on our second item of the evening is a COA for 1830 Chop House, I believe, and we'll hear from the staff first. Okay. All right, so um, obviously uh, this is for 111 West Main Street, and I don't need to go into great detail about it. It has been before the HPC prior. Um, it has received several COAs. Um, and the building is contributing as it has been every other time the applicant has been uh, in front of you. Uh, so tonight the application is a certificate of appropriateness for uh, outdoor fencing uh, so that they can provide dining service at the restaurant. Uh, the applicant is requesting to install black aluminum fencing in the alley west of the building and on the sidewalk to the north of the building. The fence is a requirement for the restaurant to serve from the bar on public space. Uh, the fencing will be installed using a base that does not permanently attach to the pavers or concrete. And the fence is, going, is proposed to be made of uh, black aluminum. Uh, fencing, including the tables and chairs, will be put into storage during the season in which outdoor dining is unavailable. So it's not a year-round thing, it's just uh, while the weather is good. The applicant has provided diagrams of where the fencing will be placed while in use. Um, and I can show those to you real quick um, so that you can be, let's see here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in this picture, I can get that on the screen. Maybe. 
strange. Well, the Wi-Fi has not been working very good in this room, so we're having some technical difficulties, but I think you all have that in your packet. Um, you can see that the fencing is, um, it, it encompasses the, the sidewalk in, in the north side of the building, uh, allowing for entry at, at the door, but does not impede the uh, trail section of the infrastructure out front. Um, and then also they've, They've, had, they've received approval from the Board of Works to do this. Um, they've also had fencing in the alley um, that meets all the requirements for serving. Um, I believe the applicant will talk about this a little further, but working with um, the proper authorities to make sure that that enclosure um, is what it's supposed to be in order to identify it as a space to serve. Um, so they have uh, received approval for the sidewalk um, and to fence in the alley. The alley will remain open, so um, it's not being closed. If pedestrians choose to walk through the alley, um, they will have every right to do so. Um, the restaurant and applicant are both aware of that. Um, the configuration on the north side, which I wish I could show you, um, but is an offset scenario um, where it's coming off of uh, the east and west side and it'll be kind of like a zigzag to get through it. So when you're looking um, south from the north end of the alley, um, you'll, it'll, it'll appear to be a solid screen, but it, it is just something that's passable. Um, and the spacing, uh, I've worked with the applicant to make sure that the spacing is such that the, uh, it will meet the ADA requirements for anybody who is uh, disabled or in a wheelchair or anything like that. So even if they, midway through that south side, decide they want to turn around and come back, that turning radius will, will meet all those requirements so they can, they can get around and get back there. Um, Get back to the staff report. And I apologize, I can't get my pictures on the screen. Um, the applicant did receive, as I mentioned, approval from the Board of Works at the March 22nd, uh, 2001 meeting, uh, 2021, sorry. Uh, so staff recommendation. Um, during the square renovations, the idea of activating outdoor space was an extremely high priority, um, including outdoor dining. Even more specifically, this alley was reconstructed to attract a dining experience. The use of this, the space in this application is exactly what plans of the renovations was intended to produce. And here we are, so we're all excited to be here for that. Staff believes additional features to the square such as this will help transform the way people use and enjoy our district in a positive way. Uh, so uh, therefore, staff recommends approval of the COA application. And um, I'd like to show you some the pictures here, but um, Casey, is, as you've kind of talked about the theme of, you know, fixtures being black, the fencing is black, the tables and chairs are black. Uh, the, um, you know, I don't, I'm not sure if we've talked about the umbrellas. Uh, Rob can probably touch on that, but um, everything is intended to complement what we've already installed on the city infrastructure side. So um, with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, sir. Any questions for Derek? Um, I just have one question. In the picture of the fence example, mm -hmm. uh, it looks like there's some red accent um, in the middle of the fence. Is that going to be the case for this fence? No, it is not. Yeah, It'll be all black? Yeah, th this was a picture taken of an existing fence just to use as an example um, of how the legs work uh, with the installation. Okay. So will the design of the, the fence be exactly like that? Um, as of the application, I don't know that we have an exact style. Uh, Rob was working on that, and he's got a picture of it. So Great. He does have okay. that. Black aluminum is what we were shooting for at the time. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll hear from the applicant. Thank you, Derek. See if we can get some pretty pictures for them. <clears throat> Did that take? Oh, there we go. All right. Uh, good evening, and thank you for taking the time to to see us this evening. Um, 
Let's get a uh, slideshow from the beginning. Um, what did I do wrong here? Let's see here. There we go. Um, give you a little bit of idea what we're looking to achieve here. Uh, for some reason, I'm having technical difficulties too. Full screen? Is it? Oh, okay. There we go. This would show the looking north of the alley. And by looking north, you can see there's a bullard that sits in the middle of the alleyway. Uh, by design there, that will be offset, again, allowing that five-foot passageway between the fence and the bollard per ADA requirements. All the fencing, uh, you'll see this design fencing, a typical wrought iron, uh, just standard half-inch box, aluminum black, powder-coated uh, framing is what we're looking to go with. We'd had another design that we had chosen thought that really kind of popped out, but at the same time, it, the lead times on this stuff has become incredibly long, and stuff's gotten expensive. I mean, almost cost prohibitive to say that makes sense. So we've kind of gone back a little bit, stepped back in, in kind of a more traditional black aluminum rod iron style fence there. Um, this is the overhead view. Again, it won't protrude into the uh, main walkway. Uh, it's actually reversed in this particular rendering. Uh, the, the block is actually part of the, the uh, trail and the concrete's up against the building. But it's a 12 foot, so you're like 12 and 12 is 24 foot total. Uh, and gives us plenty of room for the uh, outdoor seating with some fire pits uh, to really create that atmosphere in front of the, the restaurant. Um, whereas most of the seating you'll see runs through the alley itself. Um, this is the uh, furniture detail, the Sullivan series, aluminum. Uh, you'll see it's shown uh, in silver in this rendering here, but it is available in black, and that, has, that is what we intend to go with. So the uh, black seating and the black powder-coated uh, uh, table. And then this was, again, one of the ideas we'd had, uh, and like Derek alluded to, really kind of just give you an idea of how the mounting would work and that the, the, the feet would work on that. But again, we're going back to a more traditional wrought iron uh, type design. The logo in the middle there, that was what was provided. That was the picture provided by that supplier at the time. Um, this is looking south uh, in the, the gateway that we've got, a little water feature that can sit there and then some greenery to really kind of set a nice atmosphere. And while CVS is a great, you know, contributor to the community, I don't know if you want to sit there and eat dinner <laughs> and stare at the CVS down the alley. So uh, kind of break that up a little bit and again, uh, break the wind too because that becomes a bit of a wind tunnel from time to time through that alley so it really helps with the experience being able to sit there and enjoy the alley and a dinner at the, at the, in the evening. Uh, this is more of a technical overview of that to give you an idea of, of the intention of how that would uh, set out so you have your five foot ADA passage. And then this would show the gate in the open position which would allow the city itself, if they needed to get into the alley, passageway for maintenance, uh, for whatever reason, the gate would be uh, functional to open and for clear passage and then obviously for off season. Uh, I know they plow that in the winter time and um, any other maintenance concerns that would, that would be there. And then the gate detail, we had a couple of options to present. Um, the one on the left kind of has a little bit of a, a little more detail on the top end of it. Um, this design, these are just a couple of designs we found online, but our thought uh, intention was to come in with a steel frame, have it powder coated black, and then use Trex uh, composite wood board so that you don't have maintenance issues, it's gonna be durable and last a long time and not be prone to fading and then having to you know, restain it or reseal it every other season or whatnot. So it would really bode well to, to complement the, the building and the, the alleyway and low maintenance as well. And that's, that's what I've got to share with you this evening. Okay.
Any questions for the applicant to start off? None? Uh, a question on the feet. Uh, mm -hmm. So how do you, how will the feet attach or base or will they have that um, kind of a perpendicular foot then that'll extrude into the outside? I just worry about it going into the trail um, if that foot's wider than the. Oh, for the actual wrought iron fence? Mm -hmm. No, there was no intention to actually attach it to the uh, block or the concrete. I don't know the exact dimensions, but I believe those feet were eight inches, eight and eight, so a total of 16 inches, and they were quarter inch plate, which, correct me if I'm wrong, Derek, that still complied with ADA uh, for a wheelchair to clear and not being a trip hazard. Okay. And then, um the doorway did you want our opinion one way or the other on those two options um for the fence is that what I'm, you're looking for i'm open to suggestions and comments. I, yeah. I personally like the the first one or the one on the left that had mm -hmm. the square um i think that complements the fencing that's in front of the building um along all around downtown where they have the planters uh, i believe there's some circles or squares right. and some type of geometric shapes on the tops of the fence and i think <clears throat> adding that element um, versus the one on the right would look nicer, but I don't know about the cost, so I'm not saying that that would be a requirement, but I think adding those elements that you see in other places using that black fixture might be uh, a better use than a plain Absolutely. flat wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll just echo what Casey said. Uh, I really like the one on the left as well. I think um, the extra detail just really gives it a little pizzazz and it, um, it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Where will the fixtures go in the off season? Um, will they stay there permanently? The gates uh, will swing open, so they're uh, they'll be fixed to. The, there's concrete runners along the alleyway, and they'll be affixed. Those will swing open and pin to the ground to keep them safe and secure. All the other fencing that we're looking at, all the 36 inch fencing to satisfy excise requirements, all the seats and chairs, the water feature, the greenery, all of that will be put up in storage okay. off season. All right, any other questions? With that, I would entertain a motion to move on the COA. I head nod from Nicole. Yes. She'll make the motion. No, motion to approve. Okay. We have a motion. <laughs> uh, motion. And this is a second. I'll second it. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you. Appreciate your time. All right. Is there anything else to come before the board? Seeing no other business, I will make a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All right. Thank you. We'll see you next month.